Hey guys, what's good? Derek here from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So as we get into the conclusion of these chapters, I want to focus on one other thing here that Alma could have changed his heart because of. It's the end of chapter 16, where Abinadi has just spoken about Jesus Christ. He talked about how he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes, we are healed. He is the founder of our peace. You get to the very end right here, verses 13. 14 and 15 of chapter 16, because these priests had talked about how we teach the law of Moses. Abinadi says, now ought ye not to tremble and repent of your sins? After you've heard all of these things, doesn't it make you want to change and repent and remember that only in and through Jesus Christ can ye be saved? Therefore, if ye teach the law of Moses, also teach that it is a shadow of those things which are to come. Teach them that redemption cometh through Christ the Lord, who is the very eternal Father. Amen. I do believe that something in these chapters, in fact, maybe it was the entire thing that really caused Alma to want to change. Well, as we get into chapter 17, I wish chapter 17 said, and it came to pass that everybody in King Noah's court, including King Noah, said, Abinadi, we love you. We love your message. Thank you for helping us understand who Jesus Christ is. We want to repent. We want to change. Thank you. And they let him go and all of God's children were happy. Nope, that's not what happens here. They want to put him to death. In fact, three days they confer and have this little kind of a sham trial. It's very similar to what you see with Jesus, with Joseph Smith and other Christian martyrs. You see so many similar things here. They bring him back. Abinadi, we have found an accusation against thee and thou art worthy of death. For thou hast said that God himself should come down among the children of men and now for this cause thou shalt be put to death, unless thou wilt recall all the words which thou hast spoken evil concerning me and my people. And Abinadi in his boldness says, I will not recall the words which I have spoken unto you concerning this people, for they are true. That ye may know of their surety, I have suffered myself that I have fallen into your hands. Like, you didn't catch me. I came here and I allowed myself to be taken. And these words shall stand as a testimony against you. And if you slay me, you will shed innocent blood, and this shall stand as a testimony against you in the last day. You know, again, these Christian martyrs, we see the same thing happening, like you will shed innocent blood by doing this. Now, verse 11, King Noah is about to release him, for he feared his word. He feared the judgments of God would come upon him. Noah all of a sudden is like, ooh, maybe we need to listen to this guy. And the people are just like, no, Noah, you remember what he said about you. And all of a sudden they stir him back into anger to where Noah's quote unquote repentant heart changed back to the hard heart, which shows you who you hang out with is pretty huge, right? And here, sadly, in this chapter is where we see the martyrdom of Abinadi. You go down to verses 19 and 20. Thus God executed vengeance upon all those that destroy his people. O oh God, receive my soul. Those very words are very similar to what Joseph Smith said. O oh Lord, my God, as he left from the window there at Carthage jail. You have the apostle Stephen who says, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit as he is being stoned to death. And you even see Jesus Christ himself who says, Father, into thy hands I commit in my spirit. It's like these individuals know where they are going. And why? Because Abinadi, when he had said these words, he fell having suffered death by fire, having been put to death because he would not deny the commandments of God, having sealed the truth of his words by his death. Now, someone taught me something a long time ago about the name Abinadi. Now, this is what it could mean. When you start breaking down these words in Hebrew, you've got the word Abi or Abba, which is a very tender expression of father. Okay, we see Jesus who says, Abba, Father. You know, we see that in the New Testament as Jesus communes with his own father. The word Nadi means to call out, to shout, or to make one's presence known, or to witness, which I think is interesting because what has Abinadi done? He has made God's presence known among these people. He has witnessed unto them. He has borne his testimony about Jesus Christ. Abinadi's very name in and of itself is a tribute to the way he lived his life. Now, here's where we get back to verse number two, and we'll talk more about this next week as we see Alma's adventures after this. There was one among them whose name was Alma, he being a descendant of Nephi. He was a young man. He believed the words which Abinadi had spoken, for he knew concerning the iniquity which Abinadi had testified against them. Therefore, he began to plead with the king that he would not be angry with Abinadi, but suffer that he might depart in peace. And the king was more wroth, caused Alma that he should be cast out among them, sent his servants after them that they might slay him. But then he takes time and he he hides himself and he writes all the words which Abinadi had spoken. We largely have this whole account because of what Alma
Alma wrote down. I am grateful that Alma took time to write these things down. So was Abinadi a failure as a missionary? Absolutely not. One of the things you can do is you can actually go to preach my gospel here. You can know you have been a successful missionary when you dot dot dot. And you look at all these things right here. Abinadi nails every single one of them. And it doesn't necessarily talk about the number of converts you have, but it talks about feeling the Spirit testify to people through you, loving people and desiring their salvation, obeying with exactness, developing Christ-like attributes. And we see all of these things right here. And Benedict was an incredibly effective missionary, not measured by the number of converts he had, but how he shared that gospel. Cool little article back in the Ensign Magazine or Liahona Magazine back in April of 1992 by Robert J. Matthews, BYU professor. This is what he said about Abinadi. He said, Abinadi was an energetic witness for the Lord Jesus Christ and a fierce terror to evildoers. There is a significant lesson to be learned here. If he had not been so blunt, the people might not have thought he meant what he said, nor would they have thought that what he said was important. His testimony given with fervor and energy, no doubt helped Alma have the strength to repent. Again, setting us up for what we're going to go through next week. Abinadi was exactly what the Lord needed. He was the right man for the right situation. As a result, his ministry not only influenced the second half of the Nephite history, but as influenced millions in this dispensation who have read the Book of Mormon, it will yet influence billions more. I personally am so grateful for Abinadi. He's one of my scripture heroes. I love the words here. I love the pictures, the artwork, that surrounds all this, and I love his testimony of Jesus Christ, how he helps me understand how he is the founder of my peace, and how the things I do, the scriptures, the prayers, the temple tenets, all of those things is supposed to connect me to him. And as I do those things, I will feel greater love for Jesus Christ. I love Abinadi's message. I am grateful for his courage. I am grateful for his energetic witness about Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing and thanks for sharing these messages. We are so grateful that you do that. Please share these messages out there. It's going to get this message to more people. If you like what you see, click the like button and you got to go check out our amazingly comfortable gospel theme socks at bobsocks.com. You guys are amazing and we'll see you. Godspeed. Bye-bye.